In this problem, we're going to imagine that we're pulling a cart with a rope, and the rope is up at pointing off some angle theta off of the ground. And we want to ask how much tension must be in the rope in order to pull for the, for the cart to be uh, able to start moving. In other words, we must overcome the static force of friction. Our first step will be to draw again the, all the forces acting on the object. There's in the vertical direction the normal force pointing up and the weight of the object pointing down. If we're trying to pull forward, then the static force of friction is trying to pull backwards. Our force, T, is at some angle, and it's at an angle theta off the ground. So if we draw a coordinate system with x in the horizontal direction to the right and y in the vertical direction up, theta is the angle between this vector t, the tension in the rope, between that and the horizontal. If we write down Newton's laws in the y and the x direction, we have to say that mass times acceleration in the y direction is the sum of forces in the y direction, and the mass times acceleration in the x direction is the sum of the forces in the x direction. If we work first in the y direction, there are only three forces now. There's the normal force pointing up in the positive y direction, gravity pointing down in the negative y direction, and there is a component of our tension that's applied, t sine theta, in the positive y direction. We know that the object does not move, and so acceleration in the y direction will be zero. In the x direction, the object will have two forces on it, the static force friction pointing backwards in the mi minus direction, and t cosine theta in the forward direction. If we go back to the y direction, we set this expression equal to zero because it's not accelerating in the y direction, and we are allowed to solve for the normal force that equals mg minus t sine theta. Now we don't know t yet, but we'll, we'll eliminate it soon enough. In the x direction, we know that the object is not accelerating because we're trying to just be able to make it move. So that means moving at constant speed. So we set acceleration in the x direction equal to zero. And if we insert for the normal force, mg minus t sine theta, we have now an expression with uh, mu s and t and m and g and the angle theta. We know everything here in this expression except for the tension t. So we shuffle terms and move it, adjust things around and we find that t is mu s times mg divided by cosine of the angle plus mu s times sine of the angle. That's a kind of complicated expression so we want to check ourselves and make sure that we have it right and we didn't make any algebraic mistakes. It's helpful to think about a couple of limiting cases. If I, for example, pull straight forward not at an angle, and then theta is zero degrees in this case, and in the denominator, the term with sine of theta goes to zero, and the tension is just mu s times mg, the cosine of the angle will equal one. This is not too surprising, because the mg is just the normal force, and mu s times the normal force is the static force of friction in the case when I'm just, I have uh, equal forces forward and backward, and this makes a lot of sense. Another extreme I can think of is when I pull straight up, theta is 90 degrees. In this case, I could imagine that friction wouldn't matter at all, because I'm not trying to slide it along the ground, I'm just trying to lift it. If I look back at my expression for t, when theta is 90 degrees, the cosine of theta is 0, the sine of 90 degrees is 1, and only the second term in the denominator will matter. And in this case, mu s cancels out of my expression, and I have t equals mg. This is also not surprising, because I'm not trying to accelerate in the y direction, and when I lift up on something, I only have to equal, supply a force equal to the weight of the object. 